Okay, everyone. So we've been talking about the beginnings of life, okay? And we've watched a couple of cool videos. I'm going to have you guys do that again today. Now we're getting into one of the most interesting parts. And so this time period is known as the Cambrian Explosion. And we'll talk about when that happened in the next slide. Um, what's so cool about it, though, is this is when all sorts of different animals um, radiated and became different forms and different body types and all sorts of other good stuff. And what set of genes was most likely responsible for that? Do you guys remember? It's the Hox genes. Hint, hint, don't forget. Okay. So due to the Hox genes, life got really, really interesting. And um, we started to get all sorts of cool life forms that we never had seen before. So if you recall, up to this point, we were talking about certain species like Camborella and Spragina. Okay. But the Cambrian explosion, the Cambrian was basically a time period somewhere around 544 million years ago to 505 million years ago. Okay. Now, explosion it's all is sort of a relative term, and it's not like it was flipping a switch and life happened overnight. We are talking about millions and millions of years. Okay. In fact, if you calculate it out, you know, 37 million, 39 million years. However, um, what's so interesting about this time period is the fossil record did get really um, cool and did, they did find all sorts of interesting critters that kind of branched out during this time. Adaptive radiation, you remember that term? So this is when it really happened. So one of my favorite creatures that came about this time period, of course, are the trilobites. You guys have heard me talk about them before. You all know I have several fossils of trilobites just because I think they're awesome. Okay, They have segmentation, they have a head, they have a tail, they have legs, all sorts of other good things that allow them to move around. So evolutionarily speaking, they're pretty complex. Now, the Burgess Shale is a fossil outcropping that's located in British Columbia, Canada. And I got to tell you, um, when I was a grad student, I drove right by this area. And if I had known then what I know now, we totally would have stopped. It's kind of remote. Have to get there by a helicopter, but um, we weren't all that far away from it. So what's interesting about the Burgess Shale, though, and you'll see this on the video, is the fact that there's a lot of um, incredibly well-preserved fossils. And not just of, of hard you know, parts like the bones and the shells and so forth, but soft bodies, too. Remember, we talked about how that's incredibly rare. So it's one of the reasons that this area is cherished so much because it tells us so much about this time period. Now, among the critters that existed at that time period, they found fossils of. One of them is called Obobinia. Okay. These guys, as you can see, had a long proboscis that would allow them to um, scrape along the seafloor and try to find some food. They had some um, feather-like looking appendages that would help them swim. Because remember, everything's still in the ocean at this point in time. And um, yeah, they definitely, definitely were interesting looking little critters. Another example of a critter back then. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to throw up um, a picture of something on the next quiz and say who was this because that would just be miserable. But what I'm wanting you to pay attention to now is like the different trends that are going on. And a lot of spikes and, um, you know, potential defense mechanisms are going on. So this guy's name is Wawaxia, okay? Um, I think looks like me on a bad hair day. <laughs> All right. And definitely an interesting looking critter, but most likely those protrusions on top weren't just for fun. So they were probably for protection, which tells you that things were getting interesting in the oceans right around this time period. Hallucigenia is another example of a critter that was found back then. And believe it or not, it was named um, because it looks like you're hallucinating when you see them initially. So they were thinking it looked something out of like a bad B movie from the 1950s. And so initially, um, scientists thought those long protrusions were what they walked on. But it turns out that they actually had their critter upside down. And those really long protrusions or spikes actually were most likely across the top, which meant that once again, they had protection. But what were they trying to get protection from? If you ask that question, I would say, aha, that's an excellent question. And that's where the next slide comes in. The Anomalocaris is actually the big hunter of this time period. And so the name means shrimp, um, as you will see in the video. And what's interesting is it took them a while, them as in scientists, a while to find a complete fossil of the Anomalocaris. So initially, they thought that, you know, it was just the mouthpieces were its own individual critter, but that wasn't it. Turns out these guys are actually relatively large, and they were the fierce predators. And so when you guys see the video and you actually see some reconstructions of them, they, they're no slouch. There's a reason other critters are trying to protect themselves with armor and so forth, because you wouldn't want to run into these guys um, unprotected, that's for sure. So I will admit, I've read bits and pieces of this book, but never the whole book. 
And this was written by Stephen Jay Gould about the Burgess Shale. And then I got super excited because my husband and I were at a secondhand store um, a few months back. And I actually found a copy of it. And I left it in my office. <laughs> I can't get to my office. Someday I'll be able to again. However, <laughs> um, Stephen Jay Gould was so taken by the assemblages of life that are found in this one particular spot that he wrote an entire book on it talking about the Burgess Shale. And, you know, natural history back in the day, which is pretty awesome. So it's a play on, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, the movie. If you guys have ever seen that movie, it's a, a classic. And yes, it's old and black and white, but I'm old too, so I remember seeing it. <laughs> so one of the age-old questions is, are the critters that they saw back in the day related to anything that still exists? Okay, well, Wawaxia technically could look like a polychaete worm. Um, you know, the hallucigenia might resemble some of the um, ocean worms that existed as well. Realistically speaking, it's hard to say. Okay, so again, unless you have a time machine, can't go back in time and watch all the way through to see who evolves and what. But it definitely was an interesting time and did set us up uh, with regards to the environment and so forth to uh, adapting to the different conditions. So what I'm wanting you to get out of this um, diagram are a couple different things. The diagram on the left shows you when the Cambrian happened. The diagram on the right kind of splits it up and lets you know what some of the major findings were during those time periods. And of course, all the time periods are written out on the um, y-axis of that. So just glance through it, take a look, and just see what the interesting patterns are. So what I'd like you guys to get out of this slide is if you look back in time, okay, and so if you look at the graph with the blue and the yellow in particular, and you see towards the bottom right that's, you know, talking about millions of years ago, and there's the late Neoproterozoic, and then you get to the Cambrian. And what I want you to notice is, remember the whole kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and so forth? By the time the Cambrian was around, okay, a good chunk of the classes were had evolved that still exist today, at least based on the fossil record, and a lot of the orders had too, okay? So it took the Cambrian to get to the um, higher taxonomic lineages that we still know and love that exist today. That's all I'm wanting you guys to get out of this, okay?